Hey everybody, welcome to QITV from Quilting in the Valley. This is episode number eight. Today we're going to feature Cheryl from Royal Family Kids. She's going to tell you a little bit about that organization and what they do for foster children. And then we're going to look at some irons, good, better, best on the irons. And then we're going to end up out on the sales floor talking about wide backs and how you can use those to be more cost effective in your quilting. Let's get started. Hey everybody, it's Lisa Quilting in the Valley. Here we are with Cheryl with Royal Family Kids. And right. she's gonna tell us about this neat organization that all of us quilters can get together and support. So, Ms. Cheryl, yes. tell us about how you got involved with Royal Family Kids, what you do with them, what is your involvement with them? Um, I am the activities coordinator for the Moline chapter. Okay. And part of that is being able to find activities to be able to do with the kids that will build self-esteem um, and give them self-confidence that they can do anything. Okay. Just gives us an activity to be able to have fun with the kids and just build up our campers. So what kind of kids are we talking about? Royal Family Kids Camp is a camp for foster kids. It is strictly about foster kids. Um, I can specifically talk about Illinois. So in Illinois, the number of people who are incarcerated 80% of those people are from foster care. Mm. We're out there trying to reach these people and to change the lives of the kids so that that number goes down. That's crazy. 80% mm -hmm. of people, that's that's crazy. Mm -hmm. So, and part of that, so you tell me if this is true or not, but I have heard that when kids turn 18, they're pretty much given them a small amount of money and then they're just... On their own. You're, you're on your own. Right. So think about that. Think about that. Think about the, the support system that you have or your kids have in their lives now. And what if that support system was completely pulled out from underneath you and there was nothing? Right. And that's where we are. Um, we've got countless stories about kids that are in our camps and the different things that happen to them and how they end up in camp. Um, one particular story that was memorable from this year is that we had a little girl and just for safety reasons, we'll just call her Anna. Anna came to camp and Royal Family Kids Camp, kind of a little backstory on it, is set up as a family unit. So we've got grandpas and grandmas, aunts and uncles and cousins. We've got counselors. All those people are volunteering for Royal Family Kids Camp. In that camp, nobody gets paid. Everybody volunteers for the camp. Um, Anna kind of attached herself to one of our grandmas. And during the week, she came up to grandma and she was holding onto her hand and told grandma, I lost my grandma this year and it made me really sad, but I found a new grandma and it's you. That's part of the reason why we start volunteering yeah. um, for these kids um, is to reach out there and to make a difference for them, to give them that connection, to be able to know that their voice matters in yeah. what they do. Um, our volunteers, all of our volunteers go through extensive training. Um, we learn what abuse, abandonment, all of those different things that these kids in foster care go through. We learn how it affects the kids. Yeah. We learn how to cope with the kids and we learn how to deal with them and help them. We give them a voice so that they start learning that they are important, they are valued, and they are special. And as part of that, um, we serve them by providing them three meals a day at camp for a five-day camp. They get three snacks a day. One of our kids this year said, this is the first time I've had three meals a day. Normally oh. I only get one. So we are making a dramatic impact on the kids that are in foster care. Okay. So as quilters, what can we do to support those activities? Well, as quilters, um, part of making the kids feel special and valued is giving them ownership of something. Part of that ownership that we see is giving them a quilt. They understand what a quilt is and that it's going to make them warm. So quilters, we're asking people to make us full size or twin size quilts okay. along with a bag or a pillowcase for that quilt to go in. When they leave home, a lot of these kids are being pulled out of one 
home to the next probably four or five times. Sure. There's a limited amount of items that they get to take with them every time that they move. Right. A blanket is one of them. When the kids come to camp and we put a blanket on their bed, they know they're going to be warm. It's theirs to take home. Right. We put their name on it. So it's theirs. They have ownership right. of something. So, and you mentioned a bag. So another thing that it's a lot of these foster kids have um, struggles with is they don't even have suitcases or luggage or anything. So when they go from place to place, they're carrying grocery bags with all of their belongings in it, which is just sad. So mm -hmm. if they had a bag that matched their quilt, something to put their quilt in, they could get the rest of their stuff in there too, probably. Yes, they don't get to take a whole lot with them. During camp, the one thing the kids do hold on to a lot of times, um, they get a small photo album of what they've done at camp. All the different activities, the people they've connected with, yeah. they get to take those photos with them too. So that would all go into that pillowcase or that bag that that quilt would go into as well. Yeah. To reiterate, the size of our quilts, they're wanting full or twin size. And that's so that these, these quilts can go with these kids as they grow. Correct. And they'll continue to be the right size. So that's good. So that is one thing that we can do. So as quilters, we can find our local chapter of Royal Family Kids. And if you want to do that, you're going to go to royalfamilykids.org. You're going to click on what we do. Then you're going to click on locations. And then you'll get a listing of all the different states that they have chapters in. Um, Cheryl here is from our Illinois chapter, and in our Illinois chapter, you're managing the camps for how many camps per year? I'm doing just the one camp in Moline, Illinois. One camp, and they have camp one time per year. Yes, it's a five-day camp. Five they days. have it once a year. And how many kids are going to take advantage of this? Next year, we're planning on 36. 36 kids. So mm -hmm. 36 kids, very lucky kids, because there's a lot more than that in the foster system. Mm -hmm. One drop at a time, though. Correct. One drop at a time. So 36 kids. So that means we need 36 quilts this Correct. year. For the Moline, yes. For the Moline uh, location. Okay. And of course, if you multiply that times the, how many? Internationally and abroad is 246 camps. So 246 camps multiply that times, let's call it 35. That's a lot of quilts that we need. So. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So there's a lot of good that we can do with this. Now, if we don't want to make quilts, if we want to get a more active Mm -hmm. uh, involvement in this organization, what other things are there that people could do? They can work behind the scenes or they can be actually volunteering for camp. Um, they do get trained with how to help the kids, how to interact with the kids, um, how to stay safe with the kids and how to keep the kids safe. Um, I would go to that royalfamilykids.org mm -hmm. and learn how you can get involved on that particular website. Uh, it will list where the states are, the locations of it, and find a camp that's closest to you and find out how they need somebody to get involved. Okay. Um, we're always looking for people to volunteer, either behind the scenes or as part of camp. We have birthday parties at camp. One of the things that Royal Family Kids don't typically get when they're in foster care, they've never had their own birthday party. Oh. Every camp has a camp-wide birthday party where the kids get cake, ice cream, and presents. And it's the first time that they've been celebrated. Wow. Wow. So you got to think a little bit about how, yeah, we're in the middle of COVID. I get it. We have challenges. I get it. Mm -hmm. But there's people that are in such worse condition mm -hmm. that we could reach out and help. And this is one example. So exactly. this is a great example. And of course, um, we have the Moline specific website that you can tell people. Correct. And it's moline.royalfamilykids.org. Okay. Um, so you can go to that specific chapter and learn about what that specific chapter needs more than anything else. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that if, you know, 50 people volunteer for one specific role, you don't need that many people in that role. So there's Correct. different needs for different chapters. So Right. And there's different activities throughout camp all week long, whether it's the birthday party. We've got a pampered party, um, tea party. Um, the boys have an honor code where they go out and they give them two... Um, values that they teach the boys about. And so we're trying to be part of that parent and them caring adults that are teaching them different parts of life that maybe they wouldn't get when they right. get moved from home to home. Yeah, cool. All right, so what um, kind of success stories do we have? Um, we've got some really great success stories. Right now, after the kids graduate out of Royal Family Kids Camp, they can come back to camp when they are 16 as cousins. And we've got kids that are coming back and saying what a difference we made for them. They have learned how to cope with and make good decisions 
by some of the skills that they have learned at camp. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. Okay. So then they're helping the next they're helping the group next of kids through. They do. They have the unique perspective of what these kids are going right. through and are able to talk on their level. Sure. And be a part of what they are doing too. So that's cool. Yeah. So they can still remain involved. That's cool too. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So you got two different things you can do. Everybody, you got two different things you can do. And I'm challenge y'all, reach out and help. So we need a lot of quilts, twin size or full size. Um, 36 of them we need right. for the, the Moline or the Quad Cities chapter. Correct. So 36 of them we need just for this chapter. And there was a, a bajillion chapters across the world. Right. So there's somewhere near you that could use some quilts. Mm -hmm. So if that's what you can do, if you can participate uh, by making and donating yes. um, a quilt, a uh, full or a twin size uh, quilt to them. Mm -hmm. That would be obviously appreciated as it's part of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, make a bag to put the quilt in. So, you know, just use the same fabric. Just make a big, it doesn't have to be a fancy bag, it just a big bag anything. that the quilt will go in. Right. And if you can't do that, or if you want to do something in addition to that, go onto that website, click on that link, see what it is that you can do. Thank you. I appreciate you coming in. This yes. is something I don't think a lot of people know about, and it's a worthy, worthy organization. So It really is. We're serving over 4,000 kids this year in Royal Family as a whole. That's great. And we've got over 14,000 volunteers in just one year's time that are devoting all their time to these kids and making a difference. So just and think about that. I mean, what would that do long term? We Let's can all be agents of change. That's right. That's right. <laughs> be the change you want to, or what does it say? Be the change you want to see? Something be the, like that, yeah. Something like that. I forget. It was a Gandhi thing, wasn't it? I don't remember. I think it's a Gandhi thing. <laughs> anyway, whatever. So thank you for coming. We appreciate yeah. it. This is a great organization, royalfamilykids.org. Check it out. So here we are today with our Good, Better, Best. Again, I'm going to throw you a loop. It's not Good, Better, Best because I have three different applications, but I have three great irons for three different applications. So the first one I'm going to show you is the least expensive of all of them. It's $33.99. This is called the Little Steam Iron, or the Mighty Steam Iron. It is from Dritz, and you can see how tiny it is. It gets hot as all get out. This does not have an auto shut off, which some of us love. Uh, because that auto shut off gets annoying sometimes. But anyway, it gets hot as all get out. It does have the capability, you put water right in here, and then you've got your big boost of steam, or you can leave the steam off, and it does have a temperature control. This is great for keeping right by your machine, uh, for quick seam presses, for paper piecing, um, just to get things nice and flat easily and quickly. It's not so fabulous for doing larger pieces, but for when you're doing piecing, this is a great little iron for 34 bucks. So this is a nice one. Um, and they last forever. Uh, they are very nice quality irons. This one is the one I keep at home for larger ironing jobs. This is the Panasonic Freestyle Cordless Iron. It has this nice case that you can carry it in. When they say freestyle, what they mean is it's pointed on both ends. So when you're um, pressing a seam open, you don't have that wide flat back that you have on typical irons that's gonna smoosh all the work that you just did. So it's very easy to use. It's a nice iron. It is a steam iron. It heats up very quickly. It is cordless. No cords to get in the way when you're ironing the bigger pieces. It also has a ceramic coating on the base of it, which means that when you get steam -a seam or whatever, heat and bond on there, it's not gonna make a problem. You just wipe it off. So very nice iron. Um, you can transport this hot. So it has a retractable cord. When you're done, you just reload the cord. You don't have to wait for it to cool down. Pop on the lid and off you go. So like I said, I have one of these at home. I love this iron. So uh, I've had one, uh, a silver one, before they started putting the ceramic coating on it. And I've had it for, gosh, going on seven years now. It's a great iron. So they've come out, this is the newest color, the teal. So there's a teal one, there's a royal blue one, and there's a bright red one, um, if that makes a difference to you. But this retractable cord makes a wonderful deal for when you have to put your stuff away at home. Um, and then the freestyle part where it's pointed on both ends is great for quilters. The one that I wanted to show you, which is the absolute top of the line, this is the Laura Star. This thing is the bomb. So this is the Laura Star with the active board. What is an active board? 
there are fan blowers inside the ironing board on this machine. So when I pick up the iron, the fans kick into play. They're blowing up right now. Let's say I have this wide piece of backing fabric that I need to iron to get on my long arm. And you know how wrinkly and yucky uh, wide backs get. I can press this button on the end of this and the fans will reverse and it's now sucking the fabric down to the board. So you can see I've got a lot of fabric hanging off the end of this board and it's not falling off because the fan in the board is sucking that fabric down so it stays in place. This is a micro steam iron. So when I say it's a micro steam iron, I mean I can go like this and my hand is A, not wet and B, not burned. If I had my hand behind the fabric and shot that steam at the fabric, I would burn the skin off my hand. It's micro steam that is superheated. So what it does is it penetrates into the fabric that you're ironing. So I just did four layers of this backing fabric, that first press. You can see how the top four layers through is all pressed. So now I'll do the next one. The other benefit of this is that because it is that dry steam, my fabric is not damp once I've done. And that means when it pools or bunches, it's not going to get wrinkly again. So there I did the next press through four layers at one pass. Um, the other thing that is really kind of cool about this is that this kills, if you wanted to do your drapery or your upholstery, kills 99.99% of germs and viruses, including COVID-19. So you could just go and everybody that comes into your house and sanitize them, <laughs> or at least their clothes. Um, this is a really cool thing. So if you were gonna do, say, a batting, you know how batting, when you get it out of the package, it's got those big creases in it? Reverse the fan so that it poofs up and then just hover over the top of your batting and steam down and it'll steam all those lines on that batting out of there, which is a great way to do batting. Let's say you're doing a silk sleeve. You don't wanna get creases in the sleeve. You hold open the end of the sleeve and you just, right on the inside of that sleeve, it'll iron out the whole sleeve. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with this iron. It is a really cool iron. It is also a very expensive iron. It is $1,799, $1,799. It's got a water tank down there. It's got a filtration system. You use tap water. You do not use filtered water or any other kind of fancy water. You just use tap water. And you can see my filter is starting to turn brown. I'm gonna have to change it. So it'll be about six months, about six months we got out of that filter. This is the coolest iron ever. We are so spoiled because we have one of these in our classroom and we use it all the time. This is a really cool iron. It's not for everybody. It's, it's $17.99. It's a big iron. You gotta have a place to put it and you gotta have the need for it. But by golly, if you do, this is a cool iron. <laughs> it's a really nice iron. Um, otherwise, the Panasonic Freestyle Cordless, like I said, I have one of these at home. It's my favorite um, easy to carry, portable, very functional iron. And then when you want something just beside yourself at the sewing machine, this little Dritz Mighty Steam Iron is a great little iron. That's a range of irons that you can look at. Don't buy the $29.99 Rowenta at or whoever. Get one that's going to last you for a while. One with a warranty. These guys. Okay, we'll see you next time. So, folks, here we are with our wide back selection. We're going to talk a little bit about the value in wide backs versus regular width fabric. Um, I'm not sure everybody knows all about this. So let me just review what we have here on the table. So this is a print fabric um, wide back, which is 108 inches wide. Most manufacturers make at least some. Um, wide backs and a lot of times if there's a line of fabric out that they think is going to be exceptionally popular They'll have a wide back that comes out that matches that fabric line um, Tula pink lines a lot of times have matching wide backs K facet um, has matching wide backs a lot of times so 
Keep an eye out. Sometimes you'll have a matching one for a fabric line, or a lot of times they just have basics like this one is um, in different colors. So it's one pattern, but lots of colors. This is a batik wide back. So a batik wide back is 106 inch wide typically, and that's because of the batik process and all the different times they bathe this fabric in hot water to get the wax off. So it's a little bit narrower than the print wide back. So 106 inch wide on this one. This is a flannel wide back. This flannel, um, this particular one is a 108, I think I'm making sure. Yes, this one's a 108. A lot of times flannel wide backs are slightly uh, narrower as well. Then we've got some minky fabric. This is minky. The normal width of minky is 60 inches. And then we've got Fireside. Fireside is from Moda and it is a, uh, a plush fabric that is, it's not similar to Minky, but in the same category as Minky. It's also 60 inches wide. Then we have right here a Michael Miller Minky fabric, which actually is a wide back. This is 90 inches wide for a Minky. So you have lots of different widths. Um, if you're curious as to the width of the fabric you're getting, it'll say right on the end of the bolt how wide it is. So this is your regular 44 inch wide, 44, 45, whatever, inch wide fabric right here. So let's say you're gonna back a queen size quilt. If you're gonna back a queen size quilt, you're gonna need, because of the extra you need on either side for take up, about three yards going this way. So three yards side to side on a queen size quilt, that's only gonna get you 42 inches down. Queen size quilts typically between 90 and 100 and some odd inches long. So that means you're gonna need three rows, three yards each of regular width fabric. So let's say you're purchasing, that'd be nine yards, your nine yards of fabric at $11.99 a yard, you're looking at $108 to back your quilt with the fabric that came out of the fabric line that matches your quilt. Now, let's say you're gonna back your quilt with 108 inch wide fabric, which this one would be. You're only going to need three yards of it. The three yards of this fabric at $19 a yard comes out to $57. Hmm, 108, 57. 108, 57. Which do I like better? I like 57. It's also less work. You don't have to piece it. It's not going to stretch along the seam lines when you roll it on the long arm. Um, it just makes for a, a nicer quilt with fewer bulk seams on the back. So we are all about the wide backs in here. We've got, oh geez, I don't know, 140, 150 different wide backs in here. These being just an example of them. Now I want to show you some of the minky, how it works on the back, because a lot of you may be going, well, isn't minky a knit? Which technically it is. So this is a minky backing on this quilt. And you can see they just did quilt as you go on this one. So they just added strips to this. And you can see how nicely that stitching looks on that minky fabric. So it actually quilts very well. It behaves well on a long arm. It is not difficult to, um, to frame up minky for quilting and it does quilt very well. There's different types of minky. This is the plush minky with the, the fur going on in it. But again, you can see that it, it really stitches fairly well. You really don't notice anything out of the way with the minky and then if you were interested in the fire side, this is the fire side wide back. Well, it's not really a wide back, 60 inches. So the fire side, um, it, it has some stretch to it. It is a knit fabric like the minky. Um, it's a lower plush. So when you do your quilting, your quilting is gonna be a little more defined. So you should see a distinct difference in how the quilting stitches show in the fire side versus on the minky, particularly the plush minky here but it all works well on the back of your quilt. And there is nothing like a quilt with minky or fireside on the back in January, Whew, warm. Okay, so that is our lesson for today. Check out the wide back selection at your local quilt shop. It is much more economical to back your quilts with a wide back than it is to use regular 44 inch fabric. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of QITV. Don't forget, check out royalfamilykids.org. 
to check out how you can be involved in helping foster kids all throughout America. We'll see you next time on Quilting in the Valley QITV.